Okay, I'm starting with um, the scholar, late scholar, Dr. William Morris. Um, he contributed a lot to the area of visual music um, scholarship. Um, he points out, again, that it's a very ancient study, and he gives a nice definition that visual music is um, work by artists who are trying to create with moving lights and music for the eye comparable to the effects of sound for the ear. And if I can do this, there. Um, And there's a long history of this um, that we that we have. I'm starting with Pythagoras to show how far back it goes. He was born in 559 BC, and there's there's a very deep history here. Um, we're here at the digital age, the age of information, starting with Pythagoras. There's a lot of names on the screen. There's a lot of names that aren't on the screen. There's a lot of time periods that aren't on the screen, such as the Renaissance. Obviously, a lot happened there. Um, some points that I want to make as we move into visual music through the afternoon is, again, there's a long history. Also, there are a variety of approaches and interpretations um, to what is visual music, starting from very early on with musical scale and color spectrum, there being a one-to-one -one mapping from color to a note. Um, that isn't done that much anymore. There's more uh, sort of sensory interpretation, intuition now. Um, so you'll, you'll hear some different interpretations today. Also, something that intrigues me and I think is very important, especially now, is that traditionally this is an area that requires and invites innovation. People have had to make their own instruments often from the color organs that were used, improvised sort of prepared harpsichords and other instruments. Um, there are a lot of patents that have been <coughs> created based on the search for visual music. And to, to today's time, when a lot of people are here, people that you'll see today, are inventing by creating their own software and hardware. Um, they're innovating what they need. They have the vision for what they want to do, and they create the hardware software to do that. By default, because it's based on an equivalent of music to the ear, um, sound to the ear, it is abstract. Primarily, you're going to see a lot of abstract imagery. But I think it's important to realize that this abstraction is not arbitrary. It's not eye candy. That there's underlying motivations throughout time that, and until now, that is um, creating this abstraction. Why do we use abstract imagery? It is something, again, that is instinctual to humankind. We've always created abstract imagery. And I think that's important to look at the motivations that some of these artists have. Um, and it's not limited to a single medium. It's not film. It's not just CG. It's performance. It's sculpture. It's dance. It's many things.